Hello everyone, this is our video presentation for our work driver to vec driver to vec is a system that performs driver identification from automotive data. I'm Jingbo. Other members of the team are Ruge, Meixian, David, Jaka, and Yuri. Primary motivation for our work is to perform non-invasive driver identification. Non-invasive driver identification is useful when privacy is a concern, thus installation of biometric devices is not allowed, or in situations that active driver participation is not desired. Uh, to achieve this, our system converts a short snippet of driving data to a representative embedding for driver identification. With this system, engineers can enable, can enable vehicle control based on driver identity and driving behavior. Popular use case would be to identify the driver of a family car or of a car shared by carpooling friends. In these cases, uh, possible drivers are limited to family members or close friends, so the system only needs to identify from a small set of candidates. We will explain our results on this later as well. There are many previous attempts to tackle the problem of driver identification. These works, as we summarize, uh, have two main limitations. The first limitation is that the data sets used for these works are sampled at low frequency, they contain few sensor channels, and they are often only velocity and its derivatives collected from GPS or other onboard sensors. The second limitation is that these models are evaluated in limited scenarios, such as during a turn. Performance in other scenarios are either poor or not evaluated. Despite these limitations, we did learn important lessons from previous approaches. The most important is that frequency domain features do carry a substantial amount of distinguishing power. For example, hard wavelets has been shown to be a powerful way to extract frequency domain information. Then it seems that neural networks have higher uh, performance than traditional machine learning approach. So if we are using a neural network approach, we need to know whether we can improve on top of existing RNN performance. To solve the data limitation uh, that we mentioned just now, we are using a data set provided by NerveTech. The short video on the top right corner shows what the NerveTech driving simulator looks like. This is a very high quality data set that is sampled at 100 Hz. A total of 50 joint drivers were involved. Each of them drove for approximately 15 minutes. There are four areas that they drove in. These areas are highway, suburban, urban, and tutorial. We used 31 different sensor channels to evaluate the importance of each type of sensor. We divided them into eight different groups of sensors as shown in the bottom left. Now let's explain the driver to vec model that we have. For feature extraction, there are two paths. The first is temporal convolutional network as circled in red. When the temporal convolution is, that is a dilated causal convolution as shown in this image, uh, each layer operates like a residual block in a residual network. But notice that there is a tilt and that is why this 1D convolution is causal. We chose TCN because it has shown great performance in other time series tasks, such as audio classification. The second path is hard wavelet, as we have mentioned in previous works. Uh, we use hard transform to extract frequency domain information. Uh, hard, wavelet transform, uh, hard wavelet transformation matrix is simply made of zero and plus or minus ones, as shown in the expression. Uh, we then join hard wavelets with features from TCN. So the embeddings contain information from both TCN features and wavelet features. Instead of typical cross entropy loss for a neural network, uh, we use triplet loss. This loss function encourages embeddings from the same driver to be closer together while maximizing distance between embeddings from different drivers. Triplet loss was frequently used for facial recognition the analogy here uh, works for driver identification as well. Then finally, there are two downstream tasks that we evaluated. The most important is driver identification, which we perform using LightGBM. LightGBM is an implementation of gradient boosting decision tree. And then we used TISNI to visualize our driver to vac embeddings to show that embeddings indeed have distinguishing power. Now let's go over the results for our work. The first task is a full 51-way driver identification. A random predictor would have 1.96% accuracy. A baseline that we replicated has 10.9% accuracy. 
our direct-to-vec model has 15.0% accuracy. That represents a 37.6% relative improvement to the baseline. In the motivation section, we suggested uh, that a use case for this system is to identify the driver for a family car. So identifying among a rather limited number of candidates is sufficient. We have set up a NOA accuracy experiment. Uh, the setup here is that in addition to ground truth driver, we generate additional M minus one choose N minus one drivers here M equal to 51, and then put them together as candidate set of drivers. The table here shows that for two-way accuracy, the driver to vec model can achieve as high as 83.1% accuracy, um, which is much higher than the 69.8% achieved by a replicated baseline. And we also observed a consistent drop in accuracy as number of candidates increase, because having more candidates increase the chance of seeing similar style drivers. The table on the right compares the performance in different driving areas. Our driver to vac model is shown to have consistent performance across the four different driving areas. And it is expected to see that performance in suburban and highway regions are a few percent lower because operation in these two areas are less sophisticated in nature. Uh, in addition to the standard NOA accuracy, we also set up a scenario with none of the above option. Uh, this option is designed to check model susceptibility to noise and to identify unauthorized driver. None of the above option is simply uh, mixing in some combinations that do not contain the ground truth driver, as shown in the example. Uh, these are triplets that are uh, circled in red, and they don't contain the ground truth driver, which is driver number one. For these triplets, the model simply need to output that none of the candidates uh, shown in the triplet is correct. And here was 50% mix of none of the above triplets, we observed a 67.8% combined accuracy, which is still high. And then we observed the same decrease in accuracy, but much lower in the amount of decrease as number of candidates increased. One advantage of the NerveTech dataset is that it contains many different types of sensors. So we set off to investigate the importance of sensor groups. From this comparison, we see that the speed and acceleration is still important, with speed and acceleration alone, the model can achieve 66.3% uh, accuracy. However, this is 8.3% lower than the next experiment, which is removing distance information from um, inference. Also note that the different uh, groups other than speed and acceleration is quite small. So it is possible that information from the other groups are correlated, thus they carry less unique in information individually. Still, this result demonstrates that additional information is certainly useful on top of the speed and acceleration, which is commonly used for driver identification. In the last slide for results, we compare the differences of embeddings of drivers who are distinguishable by the model, uh, which are on the top, uh, which are on the left, and those that the model made mistakes on, which are on the right. Uh, for those that are distinguishable by driver to vec model, their embeddings occupied uh, different locations in the plot, whereas for drivers that the models had difficulty in, the embeddings are all mixed in the same region. It is possible that these drivers have similar driving styles, which is why the, the driver-to-vac model had difficulty distinguishing them. In conclusion, the driver-to-vac model that we developed sets up a new stage for in-vehicle personalization. This is first achieved by having high driver identification accuracy. And to reiterate, our performances are much higher than baseline performance, and these results generalize very well to different driving conditions and are very robust to noise. And as shown before, the embeddings that we are generating have distinguishing power, and they could potentially represent driving styles. For the future, we want to focus on semi-supervised and unsupervised learning of driver embedding. Then we will put our attention on establishing direct correlation of driver embedding with driving style and with specific driving behaviors. Now, thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you stay safe when you're on the road and stay safe when you are at home. Thank you.